Hi there and welcome to Making the Most of LinkedIn. In this module we're going to look at how we can maximise your LinkedIn profile. A LinkedIn profile is basically um, an online CV. It is your marketing tool that recruiters will use to identify potential candidates for roles. The UCP website uses LinkedIn in particular to advertise any opportunities related to employability, whether they be jobs, internships, graduate opportunities and conferences, etc. You can also use LinkedIn to develop relationships with individuals and to follow different companies. LinkedIn is very similar to your CV and you can see the contents here very much match across to what your CV content is. The only few areas that are additions are that you will add a photo, you will have a headline summary, and you will also be able to see any recommendations or any endorsements about you or from you. To set up a LinkedIn profile is extremely easy. Just simply go to the linkedin.com website. Um, and just a note here, when I ask you about your email address, just make sure it's a personal email address and not one that's affiliated to where you're studying or a place of work. One of the things you do need to do is identify your target audience. Who are you aiming this LinkedIn site at? If you are looking at trying to attract employers, um, sorry, recruiters and employers, etc., you need to work out which sector you're interested in, what type of location would they be based in, um, what type of industry they might be attracted to. So you need to narrow down what you're looking for. And one of the easiest ways of doing this is to identify your answers to the bottom two sentences. For example, the employers I want to attract are based in the finance sector and specialise in accounting with small and medium enterprises. They'll be based in a 30 mile radius of Peterborough and I will be, now it could be an internship, you're after, so you're looking at employment, employed work. It could be you will be looking for work experience, so you're going to be providing a free service in order to gain knowledge, skills and behaviours from that employer. In addition to what you'll have as what they're looking for, you also need to include keywords from your industry. This is because recruiters, whether that be human recruiters or computer-based recruiting, um, they are trying to find keywords throughout your profile. And we need to embed these not only within that headline, but also throughout this profile that we're building for you. Easiest way to do this is to identify 10 jobs that are in the area that you want to move into and start looking at what their commonalities are. What keywords keep coming up? Which knowledge, skills and behaviours are they identifying? On the right hand side, you can see here a list of websites. These are for undergraduate and graduate roles. So you can look for internships and graduate roles that will give you an idea of the language that's being used. Just of note, if you're looking at basing your employment or moving, say, to America, you need to look at the jobs that are based in that country. So once we set up our LinkedIn profile, the first thing we need to do is add a picture. Your picture needs to be clear, professional and only include you. Selfies generally aren't a great idea, but there's a website here that will just help you with your headshots. So let's have a look at where that will sit within your LinkedIn profile. We can see here on this student sample page that your LinkedIn headshot is right at the top. So it's important that you add a photo. So many accounts leave this bank and they frequently get missed when being looked at by recruiters. Underneath that would be your name. And then the next section you need to look at is this part here. It is your headline. This is the area that is appearing most frequently in LinkedIn. So every post you make, etc., which is similar to a blog, you will find that this part will appear. So let's see how we can build that. You want to be able to include in this headline any of your keywords. We're trying to attract um, the audience. We want to highlight to them what the benefits might be of working with you. This is a section many students find quite difficult to complete. So let's have a look at some of the help that we can provide here. From a very useful website called Resume Worded, you can actually see that within this headline, this student has put what they're aspiring to, what they're seeking, and what experience they've got. 
they've included key words from the industry, such as programming, software developer, JavaScript. So this is what we're after from our students. What they have done though, in the middle between developer and seeking, you can see that they've done space dash space. Had they instead simply done a comma and then a space, they would have self saved themselves um, one or two characters. And when you've only got 120 to play with, all of these little things will help. Underneath our headline, then is a section that's about us, similar to your CV profile, but probably with a little more detail. This is your summary of you, and the type of things that employers are wishing to see are the different types of skills. We've taken from the World Economic Forum and LinkedIn some of the things that employers are looking to see. You might also wish to consider the key skills. So again, the transferable, the job related and the adaptive skills. Um, not only will you want to consider them in this section, but also when you look at the skills section itself. So this summary or this about section is the first three lines generally that are seen when you're looking at a mobile or on a PC before you've expanded this section. So you need to make sure your start is very, very strong. It's opening, it's catchy. Again, embed in there these keywords. You're going to sell your accomplishments, your successes, but add your personality in there. You know, don't worry about feeling like you've got to be professional throughout. It's professional, but it still needs to reflect who you are. And at the end of it, you're going to do a call to action. You're going to say to them, if you're interested, please contact me on, etc. So here's just a few things to get you started, you know, right from the heart, as we're saying. So make sure it represents you. Don't worry about the lack of experience that you may have. Make sure that you're getting across instead maybe your personality, your achievements, your values. Write in the first person throughout this, I am. At the end of it, here's your example for a call to your audience. So if you'd like to discuss, email me on. And that way you're just giving them an action to complete. So let's have a look at where this would be in LinkedIn. So we've got our photo, our name and our headline. And then we've got our about section. So we can see in this student section, this one's quite short. If I jump across to my one, we can have a look at this. And can you see that you only initially get the first three lines until I click see more and now We've got a few more um, pieces of information in there. It is up to you how you do this about section, as long as you've embedded these keywords that we need to see. So our next section we're going to do is all to do with your work experience and your education, and they're very similar in how you set them up. With the work section, just remember to include any voluntary work you've done, any work experience, if you've mentored somebody while you've been at university, any extracurricular activity you've done. If you haven't done the CV module, I would recommend you do the CV module before you fill in your LinkedIn profile. Um, they're very similar and you need to highlight that you've done, you've developed your skills and explore what impact you had for each of the roles. As you go through identifying the employees you've worked with, if they have a LinkedIn site themselves, you will want to link to that to demonstrate who the company was. And this way, any employee that's interested in you can actually click on the company's LinkedIn site and go to see what that company stands for. On the education section, just be mindful, you're going to need to add both University Centre Peterborough and Anglia Ruskin University because you are a member of both and you want to be part of the alumni for both. And this way, you'll actually be able to access information from both universities. It'll look like you have two degrees, but as the time frame is going to be identical, you'll probably find that most employers can work it out very quickly what's going on. If you've got other accomplishments that you need to put in here and you're not sure where to do, there is simply a section called accomplishments and you can use that to maximise all of your information. But we'll have a little look at that shortly. 
So on our student example, if we scroll down, I can see here the different roles that this individual has had. And if I go down a little further, I can see their education areas. Now the thing that will be slightly different is that on the LinkedIn CV, if you like, you can see there's a range of dates where it comes to the employer. Generally on a CV, you will simply do um, a range of dates only for the employer, sorry, but when it comes to education, you'll just do the date that you have gained your qualification in. So whereas on LinkedIn, you can see that I've got a range of dates even for education. So you'll have a range of dates, sorry, for the employer, but normally you would only have your final year date with education, but LinkedIn forces you to put your range of dates for both. Now, one of the things you need to do in both a CV and a LinkedIn profile is highlight the impact and the skills you've had. And many people find this quite a difficult area to do. So there's two models that you can use. One of them is called STARS. And it stands for Situation, Task, Action, Result and Skills. And what you're doing is you identify what the job was and how it fits into this. So let me give you an example. So if I worked in a bar and it was in a small pub and I was, when I was brought in, I was told that they weren't um, hitting their sales figures. So I've got a list of duties, my, this is my situation, and I've got what the task was. What I was asked to do was to try and raise sales. So I could have identified an alternative stock content. I could have brought in entertainment evenings. But what was the result of that? Well, within four months, in this case, we increased the number of people that were coming in, therefore the profits increased, and we took on additional staff. These are the skills that I developed while doing that role. On my CV and my LinkedIn profile, what I would write would be what the duties included, what the impact was, and what the skills were. The second version is very similar, it's called PARS. Again, you look at the problem, the action, the results and the skills. So here's my example. So this role, I was brought in because there was high labour costs and I was asked to reduce them. This is what the result was, so I reduced reduce labour costs by 12%, etc. And these are the skills I developed. And this again is what my CV and my LinkedIn profile will show. At graduate level, you have to be showing impact and skills developed. When it comes to your employment section within LinkedIn, what I would recommend is underneath description, add those headers so that it stands out. Sometimes you can put it into bold as well, so if you're able to on your version, then please do so just to make sure it's really clear this is the impact you had and these are the skills you've developed. This way you're also evidencing the skills that you say you've got, how you developed them. You've got the opportunity to add any of your accomplishments. Um, here's a list of what they could include. So for example, you might be a member of honorary society or certain professional organisation. You might have got certificates in certain things. You might have done a side project that is of value and worth in, um, sort of discussing. If you blog regularly on a separate website, then you can add that in. You can put in the URL, etc. Just a few things that you might want to consider to strengthen your profile. So if we have a look at our student one, we can see here this is not a strong example because they've simply gone through and said what they've managed. They have said what the impact is, but they haven't said what the skills are. I have to click see more to see more of the details. So it's always worth bearing in mind what information do you want first? And you might feel that you want to put your impact first before you put what the duties were. If we have a look at another version, let's have a look here. We can see as we scroll down, we've got the experiences here, and we've got the employment, and then the education. 
Once you've done them, if you then want to edit them, you simply click on the little pencil icon and you can go back in and edit. Underneath our education and employment becomes the skills section. In this section, you can identify what it is you wish to highlight this is a skill set. And you can actually get this indoors, so you can ask other professionals to say they agree that this is an area that you can do. From this area, what you can see is that your endorsements um, will push up the most frequently used skill set. So those that get endorsed regularly become your top three. Just please make sure that you vet your endorsements before approving them and they appear on your page. You can also ask for recommendations and a recommendation is a great way of legitimising the skills that you're saying you've got. With these, you want to invite professionals over a period of time, such as managers or mentors, lecturers, supervisors, etc. What you don't want to show is that you've got a whole load of recommendations that came in very quickly from the same group of people. So, for example, asking other students to do recommendations and you have eight or ten students saying the same thing. We can see on this student example that this student has received one recommendation. Now, a recommendation takes a little bit of time um, because you're asking somebody else to write about you rather than just confirming with a tick that they um, have said they're very grateful for what you've done or they agree with this. You, they're actually saying this is what they think of you. Because of that, you'll only want to ask people that you know. You want to personalise your request. And what you can often do is actually give them a template or an example of what you're after so they know exactly what part of your work or your um, work ethics that, that you want them to recommend. It's very easy to do. You've got the instructions here, but you have to have them as a connection to you, a first degree connection, which means that you've sent them a connection request or they have sent you one and it's been approved. So that's now most of your profile filled in. The next part we want to do is actually start to make connections. And if we scroll right to the bottom of this profile, we can see that there's a page called Interest. These are the companies this individual is following. You want to make sure you're following the right type of businesses and organisations so that when people review your profile, they can see that you're interested in the sector you're saying that you are following. When you follow an organisation, what will happen is you, just like on Facebook, Twitter feeds, etc., you will see any of their updates that they're posting. This is why we ask you to follow University Centre Peterborough so you can see our regular posts about local opportunities. It's extremely easy to find any of the organisations, individuals, groups, etc., and it all follows the same format. Um, we'll go and do it for real shortly, but you're basically going to click in the search box and you're going to type in what sector it is, or it could be a keyword, or it could be a location. For example, digital marketing in Peterborough. Or if I knew the name of a company, I could just type in the company name. Let's go and have a look at that for real. I can see that the search box is at the very top. And if I start typing in digital marketing Peterborough, we will slowly get information coming through. And I can do a see all results. And we can have a look at everything. Or I can choose to narrow it down. And I can narrow it down by people or jobs or companies. So in this case, we're looking at companies. And you'll find a list of companies. You can then go and have a look at them. And if you want to, you then click follow either on this page or on their main page. And to unfollow is simply an unclick. They do not know that you're following them. All they know is the number of people that are following in total. Connecting with people isn't very similar and it allows you to either search for names or you can go onto companies and then see which people are um, affiliated with those companies. 
You definitely want to do this though because it will allow you to identify mentors, work experience opportunities, discuss potential um, opportunities for research, etc. Maybe find suppliers that you're interested in working with. It's a great way of developing your network. It's exactly the same type of search. So, for example, if I want a translator in Peterborough, I could simply try time translator Peterborough, look at people and do a search that way. Or I can actually search for names directly. So if I know that I'm looking for a member of staff who works at X company, I can just type their name in. You will only be able to see so much of their profile until you are connected to them. So just be mindful you might not see everything. There are three main types of connections. Your first degree means people you're directly contacted with, so one of you has accepted the other person's invitation. The second degree is basically a friend of your first connections or somebody who's connected to them. And your third degree is a connection to your connections, so it's a third, third part away. There's also groups. And they're ideal so you can follow different groups or networks. There's a wide number of ways you can make connections. So you can simply search for somebody and click on connect. You can have a look at um, people you may know and it, LinkedIn is making suggestions all the time. So it's a vast way of you checking who you want to grow your network with. What you might want to consider though, is if you're connecting with somebody, writing a personal message of why you are interested in connecting with them. It's unbelievable how many people send you an invite but don't say why. And it just lacks some personality and, and lacks etiquette. So here's just a couple of ideas of what you might want to post. It doesn't need to be a huge amount because most times people will accept um, connecting with you. You've just got a little bit of extra information there over how to promote your network building. You can also search for groups. If you click on more, you'll actually get the extra parts that you can't see on the tops as part of your filter. But this is worth considering. So we might want to consider digital marketing. We might want to have a look at them in the UK. And what that will do will show you network groups, so lots of different people working from a variety of organisations who are getting together. And if there is a group that's of interest to you, then you can join the group and build your network that way. It's a great way of actually finding out what's going on in the industry. It also highlights that you're valued and you're interested in what's going on in the industry when you're following these type of networks. So again, click on groups. You click on the one that you're interested in and then you can follow or ask to connect to them depending on what type of group it is. Now once you've joined, connected, um, following etc, be brave. Have the courage to start asking people questions. Ask in certain businesses what trends are they seeing. Ask them about your dissertation project and would it be of value to their industry. Ask if it's appropriate to include X on a CV or a LinkedIn profile. Ask if they review your LinkedIn profile for you. Could they help you get some work experience? Would they allow you to have a chat about how they got into the industry? Be bold with this. Also have the courage to share your interests, your resources, the articles. You need to post. You need to highlight to people that you are interested in what's going on out there. Many students are unsure of what to post and actually as a student you have a great amount that you can put in here. Every piece of coursework that you hand in, you might take a screenshot of the front page for example and just pop, just uploaded this on what it was covering. Any module activity, any extracurricular activities you can write about, anything to do with your assignments, training that you've been on. If you've been out in the workplace, thank that company publicly Say to them, or post rather, what you learn from a skill point of view, or behaviours, or different knowledge that you developed. Look at certain articles that people are posting and write about those. You know, ask them a question about the article. Make it a thoughtful, thought-provoking question. Just get some smart questions going through these. Writing a quick post is extremely easy. 
From the main LinkedIn page, you simply click Start Post. You then write about what you're interested in, add an image, add any hashtags you wish to, and then post. Something you may also want to consider is posting information almost like a, a blog. So it just gives you a little more information that you can add. They're not quite as detailed as blogs, but if you're doing self-publishing, it's a quick and easy way. And you simply add an article. So run the start a post, you write an article, and then you can either upload information, just dump an image in there and publish. And it will go to all your connections. So the thing just to bear in mind here is how are you demonstrating your CPD through LinkedIn? How are you demonstrating that you're doing continual professional development? And these are through your posts and keeping an eye on LinkedIn. Now, if you've got any questions, please email me if you're a, one of the students from University Centre Peterborough or you're a member of staff or one of our alumni and we're happy to help. So good luck with your LinkedIn profile. There is also a second module that follows this, which goes through how to use LinkedIn for job searches.